Yes, we would like to welcome you. We are discussing today the trends in American Valley, but perhaps we could begin a little with the history of the valley. Yes. In my particular company, we formed a school first. That was in 1952. Mm -hmm. That was to train the dancers for the company, which has come after that. And in 1952, I opened a school called the American Ballet Center in New York, where we had classical ballet. And 1956 was the first tour of the company. That was the United States. There were six dancers and a tape recorder, a very modest little company at that time. And then each year we have added to it, mm -hmm. as we could. A piano, and then two, and finally now an orchestra. Now the company has 22 dancers, an orchestra of 12, a conductor, and then a staff. So it makes a, a total of 46 in the company. And we have toured the United States, seven consecutive tours, national tours. We played all 48 states, and we have Hawaii and Alaska to look forward to. This is our first trip abroad. I see. Um, I would like to know a little about the sort of repertoire. You said the company is a smaller company. Could you tell me what sort of items you do from the classical and whether you do the modern ones as well? Yes. Well, I think every company has to have something that they can call their own, what is important. We feel that our sort of mission, or what we must do, is the modern ballets mm -hmm. help young composers and choreographers, give them the opportunity also to help develop our dancers and companies, artists, to have roles and ballets created for them that will use their attributes, the best qualities that they have as performers. So we do not do the Swan Lake, mm -hmm. Sleeping Beauty and Silk Feet, a standard repertoire we leave to the larger companies, because that's something they can do very well. We do more experimental work. We have ballets also by one of our members, Gerald Arpino, a young dancer in the company, yes. who has done three ballets for us, and they've been very successful. The first ballet uh, we did uh, on this particular tour had its premiere in Lisbon, the ballet Incubus. I see. In music by the modern uh, German composer Anton Webern. And there are long periods where there's no music, a silence is very important, and we dance to it. And this is an experiment. These are things that we're trying out. We have also in the repertoire, ballet by Mr. Balanchin, the noted choreographer in America. Yes. We have ballet by Luke Christensen from the San Francisco Ballet Company, which I believe is toured in India in 1959 or 60. We have a ballet by Francisco Monsion, who's a leading dancer in New York City Ballet. We have ballets by Bernard Nault, who's a ballet master of ballet theater. We have on this particular tour 12 ballets. I see. And how many are classical ballets? Which are the ones of the real classical ballets? Yes. Ballet? They're pure classical ballets, which are Balanchine's Paradis, which see. is uh, a section, a very small, from a very large ballet called Ramonda, to music by Glatnoff. Yes. Ballet is still being done in Russia. Mm -hmm. And this is just one section, a very uh, dazzling type. It's for ten dancers, ten sort of soloists. Also in the company, I think I should mention, we have no star. We don't work on the star system. That's very interesting. There are 22 dancers, and they're all soloists, to sort of yes. caliber. And we rotate the parts. I see. And because the really important thing in the company are the ballets. That's it. And then the artist will come through that. But we don't feature anyone. There's no prima ballerina, as you find in the larger companies. There's no need for that in our company. And have they had their training with you from the beginning? Or yes, most of the company, uh, since, since 1956, we had six members of the company, and five are still with us. And most of the dancers have had their training at the school. Occasionally, we'll take someone we find on tour that's very talented and send them back to school for more training and then take them into the company. How long does a training, a dancer's training take? This is interesting because here we take several years yes. too. Ten years, at least ten years. And uh, that's five to six days a week, at least two classes a day. And the, the right age is about eight. Oh, well, that is the same here. And really, you concentrate study about 14. Twelve, 14 is when you really begin to dig and to push yourself to. Because it's that time when the body is forming, you can do so much with it. You can manipulate it, you can work it, you can build it. And how many hours a day? It varies upon the individual. Some people are physically stronger and can do more than others, actually. Uh, about three, four, four, five hours. I see. Uh, could you tell me a little of this tour, where you've been, where you started? Yes, the tour uh, is very exciting for the company because it's our first tour away from the United States. And because it's a young company and still growing, and the dancers are, it's interesting to see the different cultures, the different people, the different dancers. I feel this will help all of us grow as artists, also help the choreographers. We have one or two besides Mr. Arpin in the company that haven't yet done a full ballet, but have experimented. We have a workshop in New York, which we allow members of the company and people to experiment using the dancers, and we supply the rehearsal, the music, and the salaries, and they can experiment. They're on little projects, and if something works out, we develop it into a ballet. And so it's exciting. We opened in Lisbon. I see. That's where the company opened, and then we went to Rome and Beirut, and Amman, and Jerusalem. We were the first ballet company to play Jordan. I see. And uh, it was a very interesting for us. Then uh, to Tehran, and Damascus. And then we also played, also the first company, in Afghanistan, in Kabul. It's a very large theater, cold, but the people were wonderful. It was exciting for us to perform there for their week. And then we came to New Delhi, and uh, we were there, and we had the pleasure of having the Prime Minister Nehru 
10 performance and come backstage in the middle of the performance. And it was a very thrilling to meet the artist. And we didn't know what was going to happen at that particular time, but he wanted to see the dancers in makeup and in costume. And uh, he appeared in the ring, and everyone was very excited about seeing him. And I think he also enjoyed seeing people getting ready for the performance, the lights being changed, the set pulled in, and all the things that you have to do. Could you tell me a little about the trends and influence today in American dancing? We know a great deal about classical dancing in Russia yes. and in England. We're a little bit more familiar with Europe. Yes. What's happening in America with the classical dancing? Classical ballet in America, as we know it, is very young. Uh, it's been since 1935 we've started. We've had touring companies, visiting touring companies, the Ballet Russe to Monte Carlo from France, the tour for a long time, and the De Basile company that came, and the World Ballet, the Danish Ballet. But now, we are, I believe, emerging. We have a certain style, which could be called the American interpretation of classical ballet. Our vigor, our love of sports, is brought into ballet. Uh, also, it's, we work a great deal in drama and the theater and the lighting, and that has become a part of ballet, the production part of it, I think. And uh, the modern dance, the Martha Graham, Jose Le Monde, especially Martha Graham, her marvelous use of the theater, how to divide the stage, the lighting, using modern American composers, <coughs> and decor, Noguchi and people she has used, has all been sort of absorbed by the young choreographers that are developing now, that haven't sort of reached there, but they are climbing. And there's no longer this sort of, you are a ballet dancer or a modern dancer. If you're a good dancer, you do both. Also the influence of jazz, Joan Robbins, in West Side Story, I think, has made a tremendous yes. contribution. And uh, De Niro, by using the folk element, the square dance, the cowboy, that's another part of America. And because America is a very large country, we have uh, many things to draw on. Also the people, they're sort of a mixture, so that the ballet creatively has a great uh, momentum and impetus. I think almost more in the creative part we are doing than perhaps in the actual technique. Yes. Mr. Balanchine, uh, who was born in Russia and trained <coughs> there, has done a tremendous amount for the American dancer. He has built up a school and now a company with many excellent ballets. He's helped train the dancers. He's been a great single influence and is the one that all of us, the younger brothers, look to for sort of guidance and help. And Martha Graham and Mr. Balanchine, the two great and then Robbins and DeMille and Jose Lamone have all added to this sort of pot now, which I think is about right for the younger people to use. Very often <coughs> we find here that the younger people find it very tedious to go through the entire classical repertoire and do the 10 years training. Yes. They're in a hurry to get on exactly. the stage. Do you have that problem at all? problem. Oh, yes. Time. And unfortunately, sometimes those very talented dancers to the more commercial things. Television pays a great deal in America mm. and the films and the Broadway musicals. That sounds like here. Yeah. Yeah, and also, because if you are in a musical, you can live. You can have a life. You live in a city, you live in New York or something, and you stay there. And if you're in a classical company, you're always touring around, and it's very difficult. It's a very dedicated life, as I'm sure it is here, too. What I think is very interesting is that, as you say, the classical dancers and the modern American dancers work very closely, and you take your influence from every side. Do you think by this, the classical, or as we know it, the pure classical ballet, would go out of fashion sometime, or do you think it will always remain? I believe it will always remain. Uh, the thing is, all the dancers from the classical ballet company and my company are trained in classical ballet. The fundamental, fundamental. training. Every day we have a classical they are very close to what you would see in Russia, in Denmark, in England, in France. The bars is the same, the combinations, the thumb blades, the tails, the technical terms I'm using now, the same. I could go to Russia and I would understand the class completely as here, or in England, or in France. But the interpretation, the choreographer is the one. Yes. He's a great artist. That's the one that develops the trends. He has the pulse of the nation, of the people. What he wants to say, something of his time, that is what I think is important and, and needs to experiment. But we must and we will keep the classical base. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. Tell me, these, um, I feel these cultural exchanges are very important. And uh, it's really the best way of getting to know another yes. country. What do you think? Oh, I, I agree with you. It's been marvelous. In India, to, for us to see the classical dancing here, because it's a much older form, refined, facial movements, the eyes, the hands, all the details. Uh, and I think that we gain a great deal. And I think it's interesting, too, for where the Abraham people said, we didn't realize that this was ballet. The use of, of, of a modern contraction in the body and, and the floor and pushing from the floor and uh, the light and the modern music. I think that has intrigued many of our audiences. And uh, so I think it's a... I know, as an artist, it's a marvelous expansion, growth. Yes. From the the company. Do you think you'll take anything from India? You've seen some of the dancing. I am sure of it. Uh, the importance of the face, I think, is, is going to contribute to all of us. Well, I think that's most interesting because I do uh, feel that it's important for us to draw from every yes. side and every creativity. I mean, this and is exactly. Uh, We've been so happy to have you here with us.
And, you know, it's the first time our audiences have seen ballet, and so this is another new place for you. Really? I do thank you very much for giving us this interview today, thank and you. I hope you have you back with us soon. I hope thank you, Mr. Thank you.